the sound test room. Hello and welcome to the sound test room. My name is Jakob Hack. I am your host and we are going to continue the TC11 guide. This is part four where we are going to take a look at the patch area. And this part is an overview guide. So if you think I'm going to make some really fat patches, you're wrong because I need to get through the basics first. I want this guide to be complete so that anyone, even beginners, to be able to use TC11 to its fullest after watching my guides. Now this is part four of my hack TC11 guide. So if you haven't watched part one, part two or part three yet, I suggest you go watch them now. Unless you already understand how to work the performance view, the load sharing view, and the settings view. To get to the patch view, we double tap the menu button and we go to the patch view. And this is the patch view. It looks different depending on how you've rotated the screen. So if I flip this one, it will look like this and you no longer have the menu on the left. You can find it up here. This is called the utilities pop over button and this doesn't exist when you flip it back to landscape mode. Instead you get this menu on the left here. More about the menu later. This is the patch overview and as you can see this graphical representation can also be seen in the load sharing view when you load your patches. Here you have a quick overview of what your patch looks like and the way it's connected. At the side here we have the live preview and this is the touch area. It's a representation of the performance view right here. Except it doesn't have any cool graphics. You can place it anywhere on the screen and when you want to remove it you simply just swipe it to the right and it will dock itself up here. So if we look up here, we have the oscillators. Oscillator A, B, FM oscillator, multi-oscillator and granular oscillator. Then we have noise generators, white noise, low pass filter noise, band pass filter noise and high pass filter noise. After that comes the filter. And here we have three filters, low pass filter, band pass filter and high pass filter. Then comes the amplitude section. You have an amplitude modulator, the amp and pan. These two are always connected. So if we turn off this, this, even the oscillators, you can see that these are still connected. After the amplitude section comes the effects section. Here we have down sampler, a wave shaper and a phaser. You have even more effects down here. You have a resonator, a stereo delay and a reverb. But between those, another filter. A low pass filter, band pass filter and a high pass filter. Now the output object is the final destination for the signal flow of the synthesizer. It only has one parameter, amplitude. It scales the overall amplitude of the patch and includes a view meter to help monitoring clipping. Going even further down here you have the modules and you have four options here. You can insert envelopes and you can have up to eight so just keep pressing that until you fill them up and you'll have eight envelopes to modulate your sound. You can also add LFOs and if we look down here you can have up to eight LFOs. You can actually have 16 tables. That's a lot of tables to modulate sound. Lastly you have a sequencer and you can have up to four sequencers to modulate sound in TC11. This is massive. Eight envelopes, eight Eight LFOs, 16 tables and 4 sequences. Crazy isn't it? If you look closely, up here it says touches. Those are related to all of the objects you see inside here. And if you look down here it says group. And the group ones are these one you see in this view here. The difference between touches and groups can be explained very simply. It is very similar to MIDI where each note or each touch has its own note number and velocity. But the whole channel, which is the group ones, has only one CC. Like CC7, the volume. To make it clear, for objects in the touches section, each touch in the performance mode gets its own unique copy of the object. This is how one touch can have its own oscillator frequency that differs from the other. Once the signal gets to the group section, the individual touches are combined together and passed through a single global instance of each object. 
The way that things are connected are fixed. You decide which route the sound will take. Let's say I want oscillator A and the multi oscillator. I also want some low pass filter noise and I want it to go through the high pass filter. So that is being sent through the amp and through the pan. I don't want the down sampler or the wave shaper, but I do want to send it through the phaser. And then I don't want a filter between that. I want to send it directly to the stereo delay. And that goes out to the output. Very, very simple. This looks like a long list, but you actually just have the options for changing two things. The first one is easy. It says suppress first touch. When this one is ticked, the first touch is suppressed and it actually mutes the voice that is triggered with the first touch of a group while still allowing that touch to generate controllers. This allows stretchy patches to ignore the first touch, which is often used as a moving origin point for subsequent touches. Now the next options here are all related to the grid that we can see over here. The grid is actually just a visual helper for the performer, making it easier to know where to touch and where not to touch. In the utilities patch option section, you can change the way they look. You have the custom X grid, the custom Y grid, and you have the radial grid too. Right now it looks like this. We go back to the patch area, nub slider and pulling up and down. Let's just do that fully. Pull this one up, do the same thing here. Go to the performance view and this is what it looks like. 32 lines times 32 lines times 16 radial lines. Kind of cluttered, isn't it? Through the miracle of video editing, I've changed the way the lines are displayed here. With the checkered mode on, the grids look like bars instead. So let's go back to the patch view. And let's hit checkered, checkered, let's tick these boxes for all the grid options and go back to performance view and it will look like this. Next we have the transpose menu and it's fairly straightforward. In this view you also set the key and scale and index for patches. You can transpose by plus one, plus two, plus seven, minus one, minus two, minus seven. And if you look down here, you have the set key options, it allows for selection of a key by name, scale, index. Note filter parameters can move between 12 keys. Simply choose a key, choose a scale. As you can see, the set key option lights up with a pulsating white frame around it. And as soon as you hit that one, it sets the key and the scale that you've chosen. So remember to hit the set key button when you've made changes up here. You can also reset all key filters to chromatic, but does not remove the filter. Clear removes any active note filter parameters from the object, returning it to a continuous frequency state. The next menu option is very interesting. This is called the mutate menu and this is where you randomize stuff completely. By pressing the mutate, you will mutate everything or make it as crazy as possible. You just never know what you get when you hit that. Those buttons are fun and every synthesizer should include them. I want to show you what happens when we press these menu options here. Let's take a look here to the right side. In TC11, you double tap. So double tap, oscillator one like that and we get this window. By pressing mutate, you can see that it mutates everything. Everything gets mutated. But let's say you just want to mutate to a certain degree. Then we go down here, we can see values. And you can mutate values by 5% increment decrement or 25% increment decrement or 100% increment decrement. By tapping the 25%, you can see that the values are changing. It doesn't change these settings up here, but the values. But the big mutate button mutates everything. If you look further down, you have options and you can actually choose to skip certain parameters, constant parameters, waveform parameters, or device motion controllers. So if I tick device motion controllers, when I mutate a patch, it will not mutate the settings for the device motion controllers. TC11 uses three types of controllers to actually modulate sound. That's why you have so much control when it comes to controlling the patches you make. Except from the touches, you also have the accelerometer 
and the compass of the eye device. There are so many ways you can control sounds and I'm going to make an episode of this guide called controllers that explains the way TC11 works with controllers and how to use them. That's why I'm leaving out the controllers and trigger section in the utilities menu for now. Part 4 is coming to an end and lastly I want to show you the patch detail view. And the patch detail view is what you get when you double tap an object. This is the patch detail view. Up here you have the minimize button. Press that once and it will minimize the patch detail view. Double tap to open up. Next you have the live graph display and this is an oscillator. Here you can actually choose waveform by pressing these arrows or you can just tap it once and you'll get all the waveforms in a list like this. Down here we have the parameters and if you look at these bars here is where you set controllers. There are multiple ways of choosing controllers. You can actually go into controllers, choose, the, choose an envelope and drag it to this bar and let it go like that. But more about that in my controllers episode. To adjust a parameter, you just press down and slide. Let's say you wanna fine adjust it. You tap and drag like that and you can see a small, small dot is appearing there and now you can fine adjust like this. Let's say you don't wanna do it like this because you hate dragging sliders. I wouldn't understand why, but you just tap just above the bar and then you can put in a number instead, like this. Right now, all of the parameters you can change aren't visible, simply because you have another menu in here. Tap and hold, and you'll get another menu. Here you can see what parameters are showing and which ones are not. The one with the plus sign aren't showing. So if I press the plus alt frequency, then the alternate frequency parameter will be visible. Tap and hold, to get the menu again and as you can see the plus sign has changed from a plus to a minus because if you press the minus then you can hide the alt frequency parameter. This is a simple way of uncluttering your surface when you're programming your patches. You can also mutate inside objects. Tap and hold, you'll get the menu up and choose mutate. The way TC11 is built up, there is practically no limit to what you can do with the patches. You can create crazy patches. It's a very straightforward interface and it's very easy to use. And with this, we conclude this episode of the Hack TC11 Guide. Now, please stay tuned for another episode in the near future where I will be going into controllers. I know many of you might be getting frustrated that I'm not making any sounds or insane patches with TC11 yet but as you can see there are so many parts of TC11 that needs to be covered for this guide to be 100% complete. I want to see an army of TC11 users out there in the field making great music while looking good at the same time and that's you, you there. I will be working hard with the next episode of this Hack TC11 guide, providing you with the knowledge you need to finger your surface a lot, a lot, a lot. You've been watching the Hack Attack show. As usual, Doug Woods, Colin Sweeney, and me, Jakob Hack from the soundtestroom.com, wishes you a very productive week.